As a quick recap on parts one to three of this box set, Gordon and myself enjoyed two days of exceptionally calm weather, exploring the island of Cana from Tenault. Then had a bouncy passage to the island of Egg where we decided to land and spend the rest of the day on firm ground. We set up camp in a designated camping area in the shelter of the harbour. The local coos checked us out, but when they realised they were harmless they left us alone. It was mid-morning and after cooking a bacon breakfast, as we had been on the go since 5am, we had a power nap before having our lunch. Then it was time to take Gordon's cocker crew for their afternoon exercise. It was still a lovely warm but breezy day as we headed round the harbour bay. I paused to look at some familiar boats that once looked quite respectable, but nowadays I doubt if we'll ever see the sea again. Although our walk was little more than a wander, we were actually men in a mission and heading for the infamous Massacre Cave. The Scots of old have always been their own worst enemies, the different clans constantly fighting each other. The Macdonalds of Egg and the Macleods of Sky were no different in that they always robbed and molested each other. In around 1577, the Macleods set sail for the island of Egg, determined to revenge the killing of the chief of Macleods' son. The Macdonalds, hearing of their pending arrival, the whole population of Egg, except for one family, hid in the cave. The MacLeods, finding no one in Egg, torched the MacDonalds' homes and left the island. Unfortunately, one of the MacDonalds left the cave to see if the coast was clear and was spotted by the MacLeod ships. They returned to Egg and on finding a cave, built a huge fire in the narrow entrance. Thick smoke soon filled the cave and anyone who tried to get out was put to the sword. Almost 400 people, the entire population of Egg, lost their lives in that terrible day. The huge cavern beyond the small entrance was a tomb, and as recently as 2017, more than 50 bones were discovered by visiting tourists. Archaeologists have dated them back to the times of the killings. It's a very poignant and moving place to visit. I was happy that Gordon's cocker crew found no new remains and we left the ghosts of the past in peace after saying a little prayer in their remembrance. I really appreciated the wide open space of the shore and the fresh breeze after our claustrophobic underground experience. We spent the rest of the day back at camp doing absolutely nothing before going to bed. In the morning, we were awake, breakfasted, and tents packed in time for the boats to refloat in the incoming tide. There was a fair breeze blowing, so we left the island of Egg to coincide with high water at Ardnamurkin Point, which we knew it could be a difficult passage in a fresh breeze. I took a long last look around the shelter of the harbour, as it's one of my favourite places to be and I knew it would be a while before I could be back as it was late August. Then we headed out the harbour on the start of a 10 mile crossing to Ardnamurkin Point. I fully expected it to be a bumpy ride in the fresh breeze which was around the force 4 wind. In 
Initially the sea was calm as we were still in the shelter of Elan Chassisdale. Then things started to get a bit more lively once we cleared the islands. to keep a good pace going because the wind was still from the northeast and on our tail. It would have been absolutely murder if we were heading straight into it. you have to be very careful not to stuff the bow of the boat under a wave when you're going so fast with a following sea. Approaching Ardna Merkin Point, both the swell and the breaking waves increased due to the still flooding tide flowing around the headland and meeting the wind and waves coming in the opposite direction. Then, as if by magic, the sea started to calm. I checked my watch and saw it was now approaching high tide. It really does make a big difference timing your passage around difficult headlands. Once round the headland we enjoyed a smooth sea again as it was now sheltered from the northeast wind by the Ardnamurkin Peninsula. <music> Heading for Loch Nadroma Woody, who we planned on camping for a final night of this adventure, the wind and waves disappeared altogether. We set up camp in the usual spot beside the burn. 
then lazed around for the rest of the day. The cocker crew went walks while I explored under the loch. It was a bit cloudy and there were no fish to be seen, unlike the crystal clear waters of Kana. However, it was still a very enjoyable swim on such a warm summer's day. In the evening, Gordon kindly took me across to Tobermory, where he treated me with a fish supper washed down with some gravy. I didn't film it as it was my night off. The following day brought another change of weather. We dismantled camp and then headed down a grey overcast sound of mull. The gimbal's batteries were flat, so footage is rather bouncy. Then all too soon a great adventure was over. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and a big thanks must go to Gordon and the Cocker crew for such great company. Thanks for watching.